Hey, this is Presh Tollwalker. See how many of these outside the box puzzles you can solve. Puzzle one. There is a square hole that measures 10 by 10. You have a rectangular piece of wood, which has a rectangle cut out from its center. The rectangular piece of wood has dimensions of 12 by nine and the missing part in the center is a rectangle with dimensions of eight by one. Here's your task. Make two cuts in the wood to cover the hole. A cut is defined as one entry to any edge and one exit from any edge. The cut can be any shape you like. I thank Tom for the suggestion, and I admit I wasn't able to solve this puzzle. Can you figure it out? So let's get started with a mathematical analysis. Let's figure out the areas of both of these shapes. The hole is a square with a side length of 10, so its area will be 10 multiplied by 10, which equals 100 square units. What's the area of the piece of wood? So it's a rectangle that measures 12 by 9 minus a rectangle that measures 8 by 1. 12 multiplied by 9 is 108, and 8 by 1 is equal to 8. So 108 minus 8 is equal to 100. So the wood has just enough area to cover the square hole. No more, no less. So how can we solve the puzzle? It will be helpful to create a grid on this rectangular piece of wood. We need to cover the hole in the middle, so we need our cut to be creative. Somehow the two pieces of wood will need to fit together like pieces of a puzzle. So here's how the cuts will be made. One of them will be a zigzag cut that goes like this, and the other cut will be a zigzag cut going along the bottom piece. So we will now create two separate pieces. One piece will be like this, and another piece will be like this. So let's move them apart. And now let's put them together. Let's move these just so that we cover up the hole. So we'll bring this piece up and we will slide the pieces together and they connect just perfectly. And we have created a square piece. This is exactly enough to cover the square hole. And that's the answer to this puzzle. Now, I'm curious if there are any other answers that might involve flipping a piece of wood upside down or making a cut in another creative way. Please do share in the comments and let us know. Now let's go to puzzle two. So there are eight coins that will be placed on the table. Four coins are placed in a row. Another four coins are placed in a row just below them that are offset by half the length of the coin and we have a nice little circle packing. Here's the challenge. You need to move two coins so that every coin is touching exactly three coins. So how do you do it? Well, let's examine how many coins each coin is touching right now. Some coins are touching exactly two coins, while other coins are touching a total of four coins. So we somehow need to average this out so that every coin is touching exactly three coins. So we might take some of these coins and rearrange them. Let's move these two coins out of the way and let's rearrange them so that we have four coins touching each other. So now some coins are touching exactly three coins, but other coins are only touching two coins. So this is not going to be a solution. So let's return to the beginning diagram. The key trick to solving this problem is to think in three dimensions. So let's take this coin here and we will place it on top of these three coins. So let's go ahead and do that. And now let's take this coin and place it on top of these three coins. So now let's look at the arrangement we have made. Let's take any of the coins on the bottom like this coin here it will be touching two coins that are on the same level as this coin, and it will be touching the one coin that's on top of it. That's three coins. Of course, the coin that's on top will be touching the three coins that are below it. Therefore, 
every single coin is touching exactly three coins. And that's the answer. Puzzle three. I'm going to present a sequence of numbers. The first number is one. Then we have one, one, two, one, one, two, one, 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 two, two, one, three, one, two, two, one, one. The question is, what comes next? This is a truly odd looking sequence of numbers. It's not something that I ever studied in school. However, there is a very simple rule to this sequence. The key is to say the sequence out loud. It's known as the look and say sequence. So let's start out with the first number. If we look at this number, we would say it out loud as one, one. So this will be the two numbers, one and one, and that's the next number in the sequence. Now we have one, one. So how do we say that out loud? This would be said out loud as two ones. So we have the number two and one. And this is precisely the next number in the sequence. Now we have the numbers two and one. So we want to group it by number. So first we have one, two, and then we have one, one. One, two, one, one will be written as one, two, one, one. And that's precisely the next number in the sequence. For the next number, we pronounce it by groups of numbers that are all the same block. So first we have one, 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 two, two ones. So one, 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 two, two ones will be one, 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 two, two, one. And that's the next number. So we go ahead here. We have three ones, two twos, one, one. This becomes three, one, two, two, one, one. So in order to get the next number in the sequence, we have one, three, one, one, two twos, two ones. This will be the next number, which is one, three, one, one, two, 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 one. And that's the answer. Puzzle four, you have six matchsticks. The challenge is to make four equilateral triangles. Each side must be one full matchstick length. There is a hint in this puzzle is that you are allowed to use glue to connect the matchsticks. So how can you do it? On first glance, this task seems impossible. If you have six matches, it would appear the most you can make is two triangles because each triangle will use three matches. So how are you supposed to make four equilateral triangles? The trick in this puzzle is not to think in two dimensions, but to think in three dimensions. Instead of just thinking about a flat triangle, let's imagine a three-dimensional shape of a tetrahedron. So how is this going to help us solve the problem? Let's form the matches into a tetrahedron. So a tetrahedron will have exactly six edges, so we can use the six matchsticks to form a tetrahedron, and a tetrahedron will have four faces. So we've used the six matchsticks to make four equilateral triangles, which are the faces of the tetrahedron. And that's the incredible outside the box solution to this puzzle. Puzzle five. Here we have four matchsticks that are arranged in the shape of a cup. A coin is inside of this cup. The challenge is to move exactly two matchsticks so the coin is outside the cup, but the resulting shape must also be the same shape of the cup. So how do you do it? So here's one way to solve the problem. You take this matchstick and you slide it over to become the base of the cup. Then we'll take this matchstick and we will form the other side of the cup. So we now have the shape of the cup and the coin is outside of this upside down cup. So that's the standard way to solve this problem. But since we're talking about outside the box solutions, here's a creative way if you wanna bend the rules a little bit. Let's take this matchstick and we will just gently push it over to the left. So we'll go ahead and push it over 
it's going to touch the coin. And as it touches the coin, we just keep moving the coin. We're only moving this matchstick, but incidentally, it's going to move other things. So we then move over the other matchstick and the coin, and we form the other side of the cup. Now we're going to move another matchstick. So we take this matchstick and we just bring it around and we form the shape of the cup. So again, we have the shape of the cup and the coin is outside it if you allow this outside the box solution. Perhaps there are other ways to solve this puzzle too. Puzzle six. Here we have four matchsticks that are arranged in the shape of a cross. The challenge is to move exactly one matchstick to make a square. Once again, this is a seemingly impossible puzzle. If you wanted to make the matchsticks to form the edges of a square, it would seem we would have to move two of the matchsticks to make a square arrangement. So how can we make a square? By moving just one matchstick. The trick is to think outside the box. Take this top matchstick and slightly move it upward. What happens when you do that? You end up creating a square between the four matches. Let's just zoom in so that we get a better illustration. The four matchsticks are forming a square, and all we did was move one matchstick upward. So this is the wonderful way to solve this problem. But since we're thinking outside the box, here's another creative solution. We also refer to squares in terms of square numbers. One squared is one, two squared is four, three squared is nine, four squared is 16, and so on. And we do call the numbers 1, 4, 9, 16, 25 as squares. So let's say that 4 is the square that we are going to form. So we'll go ahead and take these four matchsticks. We will move exactly one matchstick, and we will form the number 4, which will be a square. And that's another possible answer. How many of these puzzles did you solve? Thanks for making us one of the best communities on YouTube. See you next episode of Mind Your Decisions, where we solve the world's problems, one video at a time.